what the heck is the New Deal? The New Deal was the program that Franklin Roosevelt and Congress instituted to try to solve the problems of the Great Depression. And you can organize it or study it in a variety of ways. Some people, people break it up into the first New Deal and the second New Deal. Some people look at it uh, in terms of how it affected different groups of different Americans. We're going to look at it uh, probably in the most common way, and that's by breaking it down into what FDR called the three R's. Relief for Americans, recovery of business, and reform of economic institutions. We'll start with what the New Deal started with, and that was relief for people. Relief for Americans, people that were out of work or people that were economically struggling. One of the ways the New Deal tried to help out immediately was provide some relief for people with their bills and their expenses, especially mortgages and other bills. Uh, they started with the Federal Emergency Relief Administration that provided direct relief to the needy. So things like food stamps, things like school lunches being paid for, things like um, federal tax dollars being given to towns and states so that they could run soup kitchens and homeless shelters, all that came out of the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. To help with mortgages, which is often people's largest bill uh, during the month, the New Deal created the Homeowners Loan Corporation, which gave low interest loans to Americans to prevent foreclosure, to make sure banks uh, didn't have to seize people's homes and sell off their homes to try to make back the money from their mortgage, they could go to the Homeowners Loan Corporation and get a low interest loan uh, that would be easier to pay back over time. And it wasn't just everyday Americans. Farmers were helped by some of these policies as well, specifically with the Farm Credit Administration. This gave low interest loans to farmers uh, for their land and for their homes to try to keep farmers out of debt and keep farmers from losing their property. When we think of relief, though, with the New Deal, we often think of what's called work relief. And those are jobs being created by the federal government to try to give people a paycheck so they end up happy like this. It builds self-respect. And hopefully they can use that money to stimulate the economy and create even more jobs in the private sector. One work relief program that was especially important and famous was the Civilian Conservation Corps. This employed young men oftentimes working on federal lands or in federal forests, and they did things in nature like making trails, building bridges, uh, um, building national parks. And what was especially important about the CCC was that most of the money that these men earned because their, their housing and their food and their clothing was all paid for, most of their money got sent home to their family um, to, to help them make ends meet. One of the most famous projects that the CCC built was the Red Rocks Amphitheater out in Colorado, just outside of Denver. So if you're ever in Denver, take a look at Red Rocks Amphitheater. It's beautiful. Another important work relief program was known as the Tennessee Valley Authority, and this is still in effect today. The Tennessee Valley Authority created jobs uh, for people in this area, in and around Tennessee, uh, renovating and building dams primarily. They hired people for the construction of dams. They hired people to operate the hydroelectric power plants that were sometimes built as part of those dams. They even hired people to manufacture fertilizer in the region. This had huge benefits for this area of the country. It controlled flooding, it prevented erosion, and it allowed the federal government to start to sell inexpensive electrical power to people in this region, and this was a very impoverished region. This is one of the last areas of the country to get widespread electrical power. The biggest and perhaps most famous work relief program of the New Deal was the Works Progress Administration, or the WPA. This federal program employed millions of people on what we call public works. So that's things like building roads, building bridges, building some federal buildings, Many of the people that were employed by the WPA had been 
employed by the state or by local governments on public works projects. And then later in the New Deal, the WPA was created and now a lot more people, literally millions of people, were working for the federal government. The WPA was different in that not only did it employ people in manual labor construction jobs like we see here, but it also employed artists and writers in the federal theater project where um, playwrights and actors were paid with tax dollars to write and perform plays with the federal writers project where out of work writers like John Steinbeck were employed to write travel guides for cities, uh, travel guides for states and uh, history and civics books for our nation. There was a federal music project as part of the WPA that used tax dollars to pay unemployed musicians to put on concerts, to give uh, classes, to perform music festivals. And there are even orchestras created where people get a regular paycheck to be part of a federal orchestra. There is even a federal art project to pay for all types of art, even art that was pretty unpopular at the time. We're going to talk more about Jackson Pollock. He's going to become a really famous artist. But if not for the federal art project and the uh, federally funded paychecks he got from this project, he may have given up on art. A lot of murals are painted around the country as part of the WPA art pro uh, federal art project, especially in federal buildings. So you can find these in post offices all over the country. The result is kind of mixed on work relief. Only about one third of the unemployed Americans ever end up working uh, in a job that is directly part of one of these work relief programs and the wages were still too low to really stimulate the economy. People didn't have enough money to buy those big consumer goods like cars or radios that really would have helped kickstart the economy. The New Deal also included efforts for recovery, recovery of business, recovery of the overall economy. And one of those efforts was known as the National Recovery Administration. This is not the National Rifle Association. This is a different NRA. And that's the symbol there, that blue eagle. The National Recovery Administration allowed businesses during the Great Depression to set limits on wages, to set limits on production, to set limits on prices. These are the types of things that in normal times would get those countries in trouble for violating antitrust laws. Companies that were supposed to compete were making an agreement. That's against antitrust laws. But the National Recovery Administration waived or got rid of those antitrust laws during the Great Depression uh, for a, a temporary period of time to try to help those businesses get back on their feet. Because not competing helps businesses. Uh, it hurts consumers, though. The Agricultural Adjustment Act tried to help farmers in some similar ways. The government paid money to farmers for not using all of their land. Why? They needed to decrease the supply of agricultural goods. By decreasing the supply, they could raise prices on crops. Now, the Supreme Court is going to rule some of the programs of the New Deal unconstitutional. It's going to say that the federal government did not have the power or authority to do all of these things. In particular, the NRA and the triple and the AAA were both ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Although many of the important parts of those programs were put in uh, to other laws in legal ways. There are not as many programs focused on the recovery of business and recovery of the overall economy, mainly because FDR believed that industrial workers and farmers really needed more government help than business owners and the American wealthy. The last R is reform, reform of American economic institutions. The New Deal set out to make some changes to fix some problems that had existed well before the Great Depression. The first deals with problems in banking. The Glass-Steagall Act bans consumer banks, the banks that you and I use, the kinds where you and I would go to take out a loan, or more importantly, where we would go to deposit our savings. 
the Glass-Steagall Act banned those types of consumer banks from making risky investments. They can't take your money and invest it in the stock market. They can't do a lot of the things that they were doing uh, before the stock market crash. Uh, this was one of the big reasons why the Great Depression was so bad. They're trying to prevent a problem like that in the future with the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act also creates the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC. This is the part of the federal government that guarantees money that you put into a bank. Up to $250,000 in one account is insured by the federal government. That means if that bank gets robbed, if that bank goes out of business, if that bank explodes, your money does not disappear. The federal government will give you your money if your bank can't pay you back. Also need to make some changes to the stock market, which is why the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, is created. This is the part of the federal government that's created to regulate the stock market. It's going to limit the type of stock speculation that created some of the problems, that speculative bubble from before the stock market crashed. And maybe even more importantly, the SEC is going to require that any companies that want to sell their stock publicly have to share their financial records. So if I'm going to buy stock in a company, I can look up how that company is doing. This makes stock uh, purchasing much less of a guessing game and much more based on real data. Labor. Organized labor is going to benefit and gain from the New Deal. The National Labor Relations Board is created with a law called the Wagner Act. That's the National Labor Relations Board. Sorry, I don't have it on the slide. Their job is going to be to oversee American workers and specifically workers' right to join a union. Factories are no longer going to be allowed to ban their workers from joining a union. And the National Labor Relations Board is going to check to make sure that all unions have the right to use collective bargaining. So the unions can negotiate a contract for everybody in the union that applies to all of them. The most significant and long-lasting change, though, to come out of the United States has to do with retirement, and that is the Social Security Act. The Social Security Act is passed as part of the New Deal, and what this does is it taxes workers and collects taxes from businesses as well, and then that money is used to make monthly payments to elderly Americans, to disabled Americans, to unemployed Americans, and to widows and the, the children uh, of widows or children who can't provide for themselves because their parents may have passed away. This is the most significant because for the first time, the federal government is taking responsibility for American citizens' economic well-being. This is a first in American history and perhaps the biggest um, effect of the New Deal.